Hi everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. I'm happy to be back. It's uh, been a little while since I posted a video. I apologize for that. I was out visiting family, which was great. Um, so, But now I'm back and uh, here in Canada, we are in full fall mode. Uh, I put the fireplace on yesterday. It was a bit chilly last night. So uh, I thought, why not uh, draw some fall inspired little pumpkins? Uh, I love pumpkins. I love drawing them. I love the colors and the warmth and that kind of really warm time of year. Even though it's getting cooler, it's time for sweaters and fireplaces. And I just love that cozy feeling. So I thought I'd walk you through how to do uh, a pumpkin or two. Uh, you'll have to forgive my fingers. I've been in the studio painting away. Uh, so as you can see, I made a little envelope here, a little pocket for my junk journal um, out of my regular coffee dyed paper that I like to draw on. And uh, I also took a piece of, if I move this here, just a regular piece of 12 by 12 paper, uh, scrapbook paper and embellished it myself so that, you know, I could put picture, pictures of my kids and stuff like that for scrapbooking, if you're into scrapbooking. But there's no reason you can't embellish your own uh, pages with your little doodles. So as uh, you know, my if you've watched me before and follow my channel, it's all about uh, quickie sketches. So it's about capturing the form, a little bit of detail, uh, and really just having fun, relaxing with a coffee or tea or a glass of wine, whatever works for you. So uh, let me uh, walk you through how to do this. Uh, so I thought we could do it on one of my trusty little, uh, what are these called, little library cards. I bought these off Amazon. I just Googled library cards in Amazon and this is what came up. And I love them because they're self-adhesive. So they're already ready to stick. So you can leave them decorated. Uh, and then when you're ready to stick them in your journals or your scrapbooking, um, they're ready to go. So it's really great for that. So let's do a little pumpkin on this one. All right, so today we're going to use uh, pencil crayons. Uh, so I use the Prismacolor pencil crayons, but you can use any pencil crayons. And I will try and remember to list the colors that I use in this drawing below in the description box. I use my uh, trusty 0 0.7 mechanical pencil. Uh, 0 0.7 is the size of the lead and it's a standard HB um, softness. And I also use one of these uh, Le Pen drawings. I got this from Walmart, but you can use any technical drawing pen and uh, really any width. This one is a 0 0.8 and an eraser, just in case you make a bobo. So let's do, um, let's uh, warm this up a little bit. So they come quite white and not, like I said, I like the vintagey look. So I'm going to use my Distress Oxide that I use all the time and one of these little rubby things. I'm sure it's got a proper name. And I just like to dirty up the edges. And of course, you don't have to do this part, but if you like that vintage vibe, you can use, you can use any color um, ink that you like. You like grays and blues, go for it. Blue would actually be really nice against the orange as a complementary color. So I've used this in past videos as well, which is a rubber stamp. I just pulled the backing off, um, the wood block off, and I just like to use this the rubber stamp itself. And it's just a cursive writing. Um, it's not very legible. I have no idea what it says. I don't think it's supposed to be read. And again, it just gives it that little bit of a vintage feel. All right, so now I can do my drawings. Move this out the way. So to start with a pumpkin, you're gonna start with basically a circle, and this guy I think we'll put pretty much right in the middle. So I'm going to press a little bit, oops, need some lead, there we go. Press a little bit darker so you can see. But when you sketch, you wanna keep it relatively light so that you can erase it. I'm trying to keep my hand from casting a shadow. So you can see I'm just going to do a circle. Maybe bring you in a little closer. Hopefully you're in frame there. So I've got my circle. And I think what I'll do is I'll do a top-down perspective so that 
I'm not looking directly straight at the pumpkin, but I'm looking over top of the pumpkin a little bit. So I'm going to give myself a little divot here, and that is going to be where the stem comes out. So I give myself a little half smiley face, and then I give myself two little triangles going up. And I hope you sketch along with me. You can pause the video anytime you want. So now I know where the top of my pumpkin is. So now I'm gonna give myself, I'm gonna erase this little curly line because now I know where my stem is gonna come out of. And I'm gonna give myself a little indication of the letter M. So there's a, a broad N there. What we're gonna do now is build, slowly build up the texture and the ribbing of these pumpkins. So they have a kind of a, a ribbed look to them. So I'm gonna pull these lines and connect them to that bottom sketch line that I did. So I'm gonna do, try and do them a little bit darker. Hopefully they're showing up. Maybe move this lamp, hang on one second. Move it so that hopefully I don't cast a shadow every time. Okay, so now I've got my stem. I'm gonna pull out another section, another segment, kind of like the soft sections of an orange, you know, how they grow out in little segments. So we're gonna do another one on this side. So I'm just following the contour, following the contour of the shape. And then I've got another one in the back and another one in the back. Okay, so there's my pumpkin. The basic shape. So now I'm going to uh, curve these lines in as if they were curved up into the bottom of the pumpkin here. And then we can start playing with the stem a little bit. So you can do something fun like a curly cue like that. You can have it end straight. Let me show you how to do that. Sorry. I haven't done a video in a while. Ooh, my camera's shaking. So remember step by step. So I'm going to take this line, I'm going to wrap it around, and I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to take this line, I'm going to wrap it around, and I'm going to stop right here. And then I'm going to continue those lines out and bring that line back to this one. So this piece goes behind this piece. All right, so now that I have my basic shape, we can play with some color. And again, it's just loose easy sketching. So I have a uh, dark gray, a cool gray here, sorry. So I like to start with my shading. Make sure I'm in frame here. And I like to just put down an indication of a shadow that's casted from the base of this pumpkin. And we can darken that later if we want to. The next thing I'm gonna do is fill my pumpkin in with the orange pencil crayon. Just throwing it on there. Just filling in this space. You can clean up some lines too if you find you've got a lot of lines in there. It just Then it stays a little bit cleaner when you put the pencil crayon in. So I'm just gonna Fill in that space. The whole pumpkin is orange. Now we're gonna give my pumpkin a little bit more definition by using a darker orange. So this is a, what's this? A poppy red. So I'm gonna find those channels that I drew, those lines, and I'm gonna pop a little bit of the darker red at the bottom and on the side of those lines. So here's the bottom going in. And I'm going up the line and up the line, go on both sides of the line, pull my orange out just a little bit. I don't want to pull, I don't want to make the whole thing red, just want to have a little variation in shading here. So I'm going to put a little bit of shading inside the pumpkin itself, down deep where it curves in to where the stem is. A little bit of variation here in between each segment just to really pop the shape and the form a little bit. 
I'll go to a lighter orange, which is called a sunburst yellow. I'm going to color in some of the over top of the orange here with a bright pop of yellowy color. It's a very soft yellow, sunshine yellow. It's not a lemon yellow. So it's got some red in it. Make it a orangey yellow. I'm just gonna fill that all in. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way. Normally I would hold my pencil like this, but I wanna make sure you can see, so I'm holding it way back here. Okay, so we got a little variation in color and we're keeping the form. And what's nice about adding these ranges of colors, it also implies different textures. Now you know how the pumpkin has a certain kind of skin, so it, it reflects the colors of orange differently. So I'm gonna go back to my original orange and I'm just gonna throw in a little bit more of that. Just a little bit. Really love the pop of this orange. Just doodling away. And then I'm going to take a brown. So this is a Sienna brown. And I wanna just pop the, the, um, the curves and form a little bit more. I wanna really capture the, the form of this pumpkin and how it curves like this on each segment. And you don't wanna overdo it. You don't wanna put too much brown in, but you wanna introduce a little. It warms it up and it ties it in with this brown as well. A nice warm fall pumpkin. And of course, we'll do the stem. So I like to color that in nice and quick. Again, quickie sketch, just trying to capture a relatively simple drawing. And then we'll use a dark brown. So this is a dark brown. <laughs> and we'll throw in a little bit more detail. We'll pop this one darker in the background where it stops and pop it forward here. So we'll put the dark in the back and keep the, the front of the um, stem lighter. Throw a little bit of green in there. This is a chartreuse, I believe. I just like to throw a little green, not too much. All right, and I'm gonna take my yellow one more time, my sunburst, and I'm just gonna push hard and burnish the paper. This is the last step. And what I like about this is it really softens the texture of the pencil crayon into smooth and it almost looks like an actual crayon. Oops. If you use um if you use high-end pencil crayons, they have a high lead content, a uh, high wax content, so their blending capabilities are great. But again, you can use anything. You can use markers, you can use whatever you want. And then what I like to do is I do like to add my black uh, outline. You don't have to, you can leave it like this, but I do like to add a little bit of scribble with the black. Now some black markers will not sit well on top of wax crayon. As you can see, it's kind of uneven, but that's the look I like. Just pull some detail out here. remember which part of the stem goes behind it can go a little bit darker than the part that sits in front it gives you a little bit more definition a little bit applied lines down here really pop those all that work you did and there you go there's a little pumpkin you can do your little curly cues. There you go. So there's a little removable piece you can use for your junk journaling and you've doodled it yourself. So you can also have fun with, um, with pumpkins and do more of a Halloween theme. So you can do things like this. I just took a scrap piece of paper and 
uh, doodle the um, little face and hat. So I can show you that really quickly if you like. Uh, we'll just use this piece here. Make sure I'm still in frame. So in order to do the face, you're gonna you're gonna repeat the procedure. So you can do the the circle and kind of flatten out the circle at the bottom. So there's my circle. I'm gonna follow my ridges of the pumpkin. So this one will do a straight top down view. So the, the stem comes out here as opposed to the side view where we see a little bit um, more of a, we're standing over top of the pumpkin when this one we're looking directly at the pumpkin. So perspective does matter when it comes to sketching, even a clicky sketch. Gives you some more options on how to draw things too. So when you put a grouping of pumpkins together, you have uh, you can change the perspective when you have a bundle of them. All right, so just a quick sketch here. So I don't wanna make the video too long, but we'll put the eyes in. So we'll do the traditional triangle eyes. And I just wanna show you how to make them just a little bit more three-dimensional as if they are carved out of this pumpkin. Big smile and maybe a tooth or two. Let's do two teeth. So what I like to do is if you were to carve into this pumpkin, there's the fleshy bit behind. So this is the skin, this is the flesh. So that would actually show in the carving. Again, depending on the angle you're looking at, but we're gonna simplify things here. So we're gonna give ourselves this thicker line. And again, we'd see it here and we'd see it here. So I'll show you what that looks like in a second. I just wanna clean up some of these lines so it doesn't get too messy. Because when you add the pencil crayon, it does blend the pencil and it gets kind of dirty looking. So you wanna try and clean it up if you can. This time I'm gonna draw it first. Maybe that will show it off a little bit more. So I'm gonna give myself my wedges here. Segments. Okay. So now I'm gonna draw the triangle again. Draw the triangle. Triangle. And smiley face. When you draw the smiley face, try and include the teeth. Okay, so now we can, oops, got the stem. Okay, so now we can color them in a little bit. We'll do that nice and quick. So I'm gonna color them in orange. Again, quickie sketches, just having fun, relaxing. Some drawings will work out, some, some won't, and you just toss them out or keep them as a reference to show how far you've come. The more you practice like anything, uh, the better you'll get. So if you have any questions on how to achieve a look of something, please feel free to leave it in the comments or anything else you would like to see being sketched. Um, I'm more than happy to uh, accommodate. It might take me a little while to get there. I have a couple on the go right now, but I'm working on that some viewers have asked for. So, uh, but I just felt the need to do a pumpkin. <laughs> when the mood hits, the mood hits. So here's the, again, a little darker red at the bottom, just to imply the, the shadow down here. We'll use the darker brown. And you can get really technical about figuring out what your light source is and things like that. But for quickie sketch purposes, we're just gonna have fun drawing it in and coloring it. 
And there's nothing nicer to give away something that you've done yourself or use a journal and uh, with all your own personal artwork in it. And you don't have to be an artist. You just have to want to give it a try. And like I said, you can pause the video anytime you want and uh, doodle along. So now I'm going to use this dark gray and I'm going to color inside the pumpkin where there's no light because his candle hasn't been lit. So it's dark in there. And you can see he's a little bit more 3D because we've given him these little segments on the side here. So he's not just a flat triangle shape. And I find he's got a little bit more personality when we give him a little bit more realistic look. And I'll put a little bit of orange in here too, because the flesh inside is actually like a whitish orange color. I used to carve pumpkins with my kids and I couldn't stand the smell of a pumpkin but I worked my way through it <laughs> and carved away with them the things we do for our kids. But they sure were fun. I miss those days with my little guys. Now they're big. I'm not interested in this stuff anymore. I'm just going to use that yellow, soften and burnish the pieces together again. Again, nice and loose, easy peasy. Not worried about it. It works out great. If it doesn't, I just do another sketch. And there we go. There's our little jack-o'-lantern. So you can see he's got a little bit more three-dimensional than just your standard black triangle that looks like it's just been glued on. So another thing you can do as well is you can put a pumpkin behind a pumpkin. And uh, in order to do that, the only difference is when you put the next one behind, you want to just cast a little bit more darker color where it meets the front pumpkin. And what that does is it, it just pushes this one behind it. And you can see the, how this one sits in front of this one. So just a little trick there. If you decide to do another pumpkin behind or another jack-o'-lantern, just darken around this edge here on the back pumpkin. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that video. hope it gave you some ideas and inspiration. And I uh, hope you pick up some pencil crayons and have fun. And uh, if you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button and the like and share and notification. And you know the drill if you are interested in following me for more tutorials. I hope you have a great day, guys. Enjoy the fall. Bye.